tuning in. And of course, for those of you who have been debating about coaching and who makes the better coach, whether it's the ex-players or not, we try to determine it right here. So big greetings to you. Mami Biama and Ko. You are listening. Mami Biama and Ko. Oh, but want to send a message as well, eh? And uh, when I'm uh, wrapping up, I've got to say happy birthday to a couple of people. So lots of my friends are turning 50 eh, this year. Charlie, shall we get down to the conversations? And this man has played for the Ghana Black Stars. I'm talking about the senior national football team and is one of the best capped players. I mean, he's played at the Africa Cup of Nations and has played at the FIFA World Cup as well. Before all of these exploits, of course, he was able to uh, chart a course in Europe and played in clubs in the English Premier League in Israel and here in the Ghana Premier League as well. What is important is that from the grassroots, he made his way through the youth theme teams and eventually made it into the Black Stars. Well, he is one of the very, very dependable uh, defenders and now has uh, charted a course to become uh, a coach and wants to give back uh, through uh, development football. John Painsell is my guest today on the Joy Sports Link. Later on, he will be joined by seasoned football analyst Osei Ousubempa, and he'll be giving us some, some historical perspective to this uh, conversation as well. And of course, later on, we'll also be hearing from the uh, vice chairman of the uh, Greater Accra Coaches Association under the Ghana National Soccer Coaches Ooh. Association, uh, Coach Osman Seydou. Uh, he also has uh, thoughts on this particular subject. But of course, at a certain point, we're going to be going to the Garden City of Kumasi so that we do a bit of analysis as well as, uh, you know, as Kumasi Asante Kotoko gets some new leadership uh, you know, in the dugout ahead of the start of the season, and that will be in September. So JP4 is the man who joins me here uh, for the discussion to start it all off. John Pinsel, uh, my guest here on the Joy Sports Link. Uh, JP, uh, thank you so much, and uh, uh, glad to know, uh, glad to see you are doing well. Thank you, Nathaniel. Thank you, and good afternoon to everyone. And you're looking well. Oh, thank like you. always. Thank you, thank you. I was just about <laughs> to talk about that uh, that orange shirt you have on. <laughs> you should get me one, eh? You know my what's no my size? Is. My size is is it medium or large? I think I wear large. Hey, but but you know before we go on on a lighter side, I mean, how did you manage to keep that waist size? Eh? Your waist size has been consistent since ever ever since, and you've kept the the you know the physical figure as well ever since. Yeah, the shape is important, Nathaniel. I think. Uh, it takes discipline to get to where I am. And sometimes it's difficult. I'm sometimes tempting to do what I'm not supposed to do. So I'm trying to maintain. But you eat everything. You, you, eat, you eat everything, don't you? <laughs> All right. Can you hear me, Joe? I was just asking if you eat. You eat everything you want to eat, right? You don't do any diets or anything. No, no, no. I, I eat everything, but the, uh, the timing, as in, I don't like eating after six. So I have to maintain that. Um, the, the late hour I can eat is from five, and after five, the rest is water and juice. Hey, Charlie. So I'm maintaining. Empower. As for this, Empower. As for this, your. Empower. <laughs> as for this, your 6 p.m. It will work with many people I know. I'm not going to know. <laughs> anyway, uh, good to have you on the show once again. Um, you know, I mean, this conversation has been raging on in a while, and um, I I'm glad that it's you addressing this because you you have worked under many coaches, some of who have been ex players, and I'd want you to start it from there. You know, uh, during the period when you were, you know, playing, you know, you're playing actively. Um, did you did you find any difference really? Uh, you know, between people who have played the game before and people who just went in to take their coaching and, and pursue coaching. Do you find any difference at all? Do you? Did you? Yeah, I think uh, there's, there's uh, a difference between uh, a player coach and then a coach who has not played before. Um, the difference is not that big, but I think... Um, when a player, an ex-player, is coaching, he already knows what is going to happen sometimes before the game. And also during the game, when things are going out, he knows, he or she knows 
how we can turn things around, how we can communicate with players. But for me, we have some coaches who have never touched football before, but they are very, very good uh, when it comes to coaching. So for me, I don't see there's a big difference between somebody who has played before and then someone who has never, never played. But the difference is just a little, not so much. Um, so on the on the larger scale, it means that um, having played the game, you sure will have uh, uh, you know a certain edge and a certain advantage, right? Yeah, if you play the game before, you have advantage of going to coaching. Um, the why I say you have advantage is you are going to do the coaching course and you add up to your experience you acquired during your career. But somebody who has never played before now. He or she is not going to start from the scratch, um, know all the bases, and even the, and the role of coaches and the responsibility of coaches. Anyone that has played before knows already. So when you when you go to the course, those things will come to play, and it will make it easy for you. But somebody who don't know the game at all and trying to become a coach, yeah, will go through all the process, and once they, they have it, they are good to go. So playing and retire and become a coach, you have a huge advantage going forward. I see. We're going to delve into your journey and, and the decision to go into coaching amongst the many other things that you could have done in, in the football value chain. But as I mentioned earlier, we have, uh, you know, some news coming in from, uh, you know, the corridors of Menshia indicating that Dr. Prosper Nate Ogum uh, is certain and set to make a return to the club. The club uh, where he left, uh, you know, as a man who had won uh, the ultimate in the Ghana Premier League, which also got him loads of accolades, including becoming uh, the football coach of the year at the Ghana Football Awards that particular year. Now, uh, my colleague, uh, Fifi Manfred, who's with uh, our Kumasi Operation, has joined, and he'll be giving us uh, a bit of an update regarding... Uh, how firm everything is at this stage and uh, what the expectation will be as we go along. Fifi, uh, welcome to the conversation. Um, thank you very much, Nat. Look, um, Dr. Prospanate Ogum for, uh, you know, for a second stint with Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Uh, you know, around this time, what everybody, the kind of language that we all like to use on the professional scale is uh, still being speculated, but it's 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 done and dusted, isn't it? Um, yes, largely done and dusted for two reasons. Yesterday, um, uh, Mopim Swan met with former Kotoko players and some members of the NCC. He expressed some worry that the season is going to start in just a few um, weeks from now, and he wanted things to be expedited. So in that meeting, he pointed out to former um, player of the team, um, Mr. James Akosiapia. He hugs Akosiapia to make sure he finds him a coach. In fact, he was insistent. At the end of that meeting, he told James Akwesi Apia that Akwesi, he called him Akwesi, said, Akwesi, you need to find me a coach. You need to find me a coach. But in breaking news even right now is that right now I can confirm to you that as I speak to you now, first one, nobody has said this, Coach Nate Prosper Ogum is at Adakwe Jache, Kotoko's training grounds now, waiting for, um, waiting for to come through to Mizan. Like in that meeting yesterday, Open Soul did mention that he was going to go to Adakwajachi and see the project that has gone on. So yes, it is it is actually done. Now the the other uh you know the other bit about you know second stints, you know, second love affairs, you know, uh, and how they go. Uh you know, we have the Mourinho stories, we have a few others that you can refer to. Um what 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 then will be uh, the immediate challenges that you see confronting uh, Prosper Nate Ogum? Because at the time when he left, uh, some of the key issues were the, 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 the board's inability to give him what he wanted when it came to quality material. Um, what will change this time? Well, Nat, first of all, one of the first things that I'm worried for Coach Nati Pospo Ogum is that um, there is no still the problems that had been at Kotoko whilst he was there. Those problems are still there. And the fact that there is no structure at the club now 
um, who appointed him. It's you know, as it stands now, it looks like it's Mencia because of Pim's whole radio, which is the mouthpiece of Mencia that broke the news. So it stands like it's, it looks as if that is from Mencia. Um, he spoke through James Kosia Piat to get that done. How are they going to make sure that his work goes on without any issues going forward? There is no board, there is no management. Are the management and board are going to come through to um, come come to the helm of Kotoko? Going to be able to work directly with code native possible in the professional circles, you don't really um, um, expect that there should be some issues with something like this. But then these are things that, when it comes to relationship, especially in football, you would expect that he knew this before. I hope that he knows uh, he has an idea who's going to be the board chair, who are those going to be on the board, who are those going to be um, the management of the club. But essentially, Kotoko's problems go beyond just a coach, Kotoko's problem goes beyond just a board. Kotoko's problem is that. Um, if you if that Kotoko has a debt of three million dollars, that's in there. Kotoko needs to play that debt. It's an issue of money liquidation that is supposed to be injected into the club to be able to run the club. So, my worry is: Are these new management going to have the money to run the club, especially since we want to compete with the guys of the likes of Alali, um, Mamelodi Sundowns, and the likes on the continent? And these immediate past board members have sunk in various amounts in terms of uh, investment. Um, you know, traditionally, nobody can come back to ask the Otum for, for, you know, for maybe like a return or to, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when are we going to see or hear of the appointment of the board, which will be very critical in taking some very key decisions for Asante Kotoko going into this season? So, again, referring to the meeting yesterday, Open so did also um, point to that direction that he wants that also to be expedited. He feels that there was the need to get a coach to start a technical work even before the board comes in, in his wisdom. And he also pointed out to the fact that he thinks that the need for a board and then, of course, management should be done by at least the middle of August because he knows that the league, the league is going to resume in September. So in by the end of this month, by the time we enter August, we are expecting Open Source, Open Source is going to name and possibly an executive board chairman because yesterday he asked the Akupa guys, the former Asante Kotoko uh, players, to tell him how they think the club should be run. They said that during their reign, when they were Kotoko players, Kotoko was given to one man who then appointed his people to work with them. They feel like the new corporate structure of having a board and a management isn't working. So they told the king, they, 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 they uh, suggested to the king that they felt that he should um, give some, the club to one person who can then bring his people to run the club? So it looks as if we are probably going to get an executive board chairman who is then going to have, um, say, um, a CEO working right directly with him in that regard. So by the end of this month, um, by 30th, 31st, and the first week of August, I'm sure we'll have the new set of leaders for Kumasa Santi Kotoko. And the task going into the season is? Well, not even 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 before it is said, you know that once Kotoko are coming into any season, we expect that they win the league. So first of all, um, I know that Prosper Nate Ogun, who is a coach who has won the league the last time for Kotoko, would want to win it again. The, the immediate tax is going to be to win the league on the football in terms. But in aside of the football in terms, they would want to put up a structure. They would want to have some form of continuity and then stake a huge claim to Africa. That's going to be difficult. They are supposed to have a long-term plan and, and a short and, and in a short-term plan. But in aside of that, as well, if we listen to Opem saw yesterday, he expects that, like Nane Amponsa did in his administration, the club should be run based on internally generated funds. So yesterday, again, he pointed out to um, the NTC that there are some monies that are yet to be received from Kotoko, downloads money from FIFA, some sponsorship packages, monies that haven't really come in. He expects that once the board comes in, their first job is to go back, renegotiate with these people, find a way to get these monies for Kotoko, because he, in his wisdom, he feels that, and I think I agree, that about $6 million in excesses, those monies, once they... Once, once the club can get that, it's going to be enough money to run the club, especially from the onset of the new one. So he wants them to go and get those monies. But then, of course, we know that once the foot of the play, the foot of play comes on, Kotoko will expect to be winning the Ghana Premier League at the very least. Tell me about the conversations on the streets. I mean, that always uh, has a very big bearing, especially on the numbers 
in the stands. Uh, one thing we're going to be focusing on very heavily for our thought leadership event on July 31 at the Labadi Beach Hotel. Yeah. What's how are people receiving, you know, uh, this this particular development? Well, so that's it's 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 a mixed feeling. Um, so just before I spoke to Benny and I got on the Zoom with you, I was buying my regular gobe on a Saturday afternoon after the show, and um, somebody came close to me and said, "Oh, so how is the club going to be like?" And I mean, I made mention to him that nothing really has changed. What do you want to see? And a lot of these people are saying that they want to see change. They have realized that in the past, how the club was being run, it wasn't really getting the club where they expected it to go. So it's 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 mixed on the streets of Kumasi. People feel like okay, maybe it's time for two for himself and Mensha to do some cash injection into Kotoko. They should set up a secretary, Kotoko secretariat and Mensha that takes care of all the financial needs of Kotoko because they believe that no one man, no one rich man, quote and unquote, can take Kotoko out of um, where they are now, especially in terms of the financial uh, part of the game. They believe that if there is a rich man in the Ashanti Kingdom, then it is the Ashanti Kingdom and the elite overload, which is so too for. So they hope that um, their king will listen to them and maybe inject some cash into Kotoko. But it's hugely amazing. There are people that feel that, okay, um, the second coming of Kota Nati um, is doesn't really need and be expecting to be back. Now he's in the others. I believe that, okay, he's the coach that brought some goodwill to Kotoko and the fans. So maybe it's okay for them to have him on. It's mixed, and um, but just as we said, once the season kick, start, kick starts, and they begin to get wins. I'm sure that those who do not who do not really believe in the ideologies will probably begin to turn their heads small, small. Uh, Vivi, now, don't you don't you get tired sometimes of of uh, doing analysis along these same lines over and over again? Because this conversation about uh, having a big name investor or uh, a, a, an investor with a deep pocket come in to to you know re, uh, inject cash and change the strategic business direction of the club. We, we've had this conversation over and over again, haven't we? Yes, yes, not. we have. We have, we have. In, in fact, I have a personal um, thought and opinion that I do not think, I do not think humbly that there is one single rich man that can turn the fortunes of Kotoko around. Um, you see, the funny thing is that there is, um, when you come to work at Kotoko, it is seen as you serving a science man. And apart from, say, the clout and a few things that these people get from the club, they don't really get anything. So which rich man in Ghana, and especially in Asantiman, will be willing to pocket, say, 10 million? And, and this morning, I did some research, and Al Ali and the like spent every season close to 10 million euros, 10 million dollars in running their club. Every other operation is in that. Which businessman is willing to spend 10 million dollars every year? Every year, it's not possible. Again, we can go back to the younger and then the Simba analogy in Tanzania. Younger make sure that they are running their club based on internally generated funds. They have a proper business structure. But before that, there is cash inflow. Again, these are things that we need to do. Just one rich man isn't enough to be very honest with you. And it looks as if that is why for me yesterday, I think that whilst the old players were invited and then whilst um, the NCC people were invited, um, some of us this morning, some um, um, other media stakeholders are beginning to say that, you know, maybe we should start pleading to Otunfo. So also hear from some of us who say, Nana, yes, sir, but this thing maybe should be looked at from the other point of view too. And we think that you are the one that can really do this job. If we begin, if we always put our hopes in the rich men, quote and unquote, um, there's going to be that division at any point in time because their people are going to feel um, entitled to something. The other part will feel they are not doing enough. And it brings all of these cracks. So I think that it, it goes more, it goes, it goes, it goes, it goes way beyond that. I don't think that it's enough for just one rich man to run Kotoko. I don't think, I don't think that's sustainable. In fact, that's the word. I don't think it's sustainable. What what will constitute um, a satisfactory performance for you for for Prosper Datogum for this, considering that you have the privilege of of information on on some of the realistic you know uh you know you know the the, the realistic you know issues you know uh, kotoko as it stands now in the year 2023 in the month of, of july well so but postman at Obum was allowed by the kotoko fans when he came when he came through and and it was because of one thing it wasn't because he's a doctor it wasn't because he's a phd holder it wasn't because he looks like a nice guy 
It um, wasn't because he said nice things about people. It was because he got a job down on the field of play. And if I have the privilege to speak to uh, Prosper Banati Oguma, I'll say, boss, you know what? Really, you got the goodwill of the people because you were winning games and you won't go to the league. If you need to go back again and pass through magazine, and the people will shout your name and say thank you for the good job that you've done, it is because you are going to be winning games and you need to win games. In the last few games of Kota Kota last season, the results were not coming. That's the reason why Zerbo did leave when um, um, Abdullah Ghazali did take over. Also, the results still were not coming. Kota Kota wants the results. There are people that believe that for people to be begin to have for, love for the club again, he, they need to start winning games. And I, and I think I agree with that to an extent that not a prosper Ogum. For me, I'll be hugely critical of him and I think that he needs to win from the get go, he needs to find a way to form a team. He needs a way to let the boys that are there understand that um, if they had issues before, it is time for them to fight for it for a different cause. And this cause is to get Kotoko reinstated as the league leaders of the country. Um, the bigger challenge, however, is the fact that what really is going to be the structure in which he's going to work with, I think that has to be sorted out quickly. Getting the board, getting management is very, very imperative. So everything that Post Panate Ogun will be doing the season that's coming. Because um, Nat, we have just a few weeks. And um just before the announcement for Post Panate Ogun came, there was an announcement that Kotoko had pulled out of the Galka Top Four tournaments. And um, and I can tell you that Nati Post Ogun did tell, he did tell the people at Kotoko that with the time that the players are going to prepare, he doesn't think that they are going to have a team to compete in a Galka Top Four. That tells you that he wants to take some pressure out of his team, have time to prepare, and then go into the season. So I'm really sure that he would want to win, and I think that the only thing I'm accepting from him is a win for Kotoko. I mean, even if it's not about winning the league, it's just people should see some good wins at the Bavaria Sports Stadium and good football. Well, let, let's take the thoughts of John Pencil on this one. I mean, he, he saw uh, Prosper Natal Goom's exploits. I mean, when he was at Wafa, what he was able to do with Wafa, uh, you know, and, and, and what he was able to do with the Sante Kotoko at the point when he took over and how he uh, transformed the side. Uh, John, you know, this man is returning to the same place a second time. Um, do, you, do you have confidence for any reason whatsoever that uh, he probably could could turn the situation around again. Joy ninety nine point seven FM. Hello, John. Can you hear me? All right, John. Can you kindly unmute so that we can hear you properly? Yes, I was just asking about uh, Prosper Nate Ogum and, and this, uh, this announced return to Asante Kotoko uh, for this second stint. Um, is there anything that gives you any confidence whatsoever that he uh, can, can lift uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the Fabu spirit one more time so that uh, that buzz returns to the league? They always say that when Hearts and Kotoko thrive, the rest of the league also thrives by some uh, strange design. Yeah, I think uh, Ogum is doing so well. He started from uh, Wafa. We all saw what he did. Came to Kotoko. He won the league. And he built a very good uh, structure over there with his players. And also with uh, his uh, philosophy and his understanding of the game, I think the supporters were behind him. Uh, the players were behind him. That's why I always said, never close doors. Because he left the door open for him that he can come in any time. So now the time has come for him to come again. And you know, he has a history with the club, very good one. But repeating history sometimes is difficult. But uh, I think he's the coach with his words, which he believes in his ability. And we all know that when it comes to coaching, he's, he's doing very, very well. And I have full confidence that, I mean, no coach will go for a job that is not ready for. I believe uh, Coach Ogum is ready. To, to go for the tax that are ahead because the new protocol is protocol. Protocol is a demanding club. So when you're going, you prepare, which he has that uh, zeal to, to go and pick up that, that work. So as a coach, I wish him all the best. And then I believe he can, he can do it well. But like I said, I mean, it's an example to a lot of coaches, a lot of people that you always leave the door open. So when you go, the door will open for you to come back again. Now, the, the, the bit as well about what, what creates a, a solid environment for a coach to work. Uh, you 
have been on various legs of the or you've operated on various arms of of the football value chain you have operated from the ownership level and you have done you've played and and you've managed as well um from where you sit what what would you want to see uh, the ownership of of the club do for this man so that he can get the job done like he's always known to do yeah, I think first they have to allow him to do. If the club protocol has their own uh, DNA or their own philosophy as a system in place, then uh, the coach need to go by that uh, rules and then also uh, system in place. Then they should allow him to pick the players that will fit his own system, his own philosophy. Uh, to build a team because he being the head coach, he becomes a manager. So he manages the team and he buy players that he think they are uh, good to play for such a uh, team. Protocol is not a team that you can pick any player to play. You need players who have a great attitude, uh, who take responsibilities on the field to, to make things work. So they should do whatever they can to make the coach happy and give him everything that he needs so that he can have his peace to, to work. Because we've seen him doing it before, but if he's happy and he's getting all the necessary arrangements, all the, the equipment he needs, all the players he needs to, to start, I think uh, everything will go well with them. So they should give him maximum respect and uh, respect his office as well. Mm. Give him maximum respect and respect his office. A message to uh, the Kotoko faithful, from uh, Ghana legend uh, John Paintsell, who's one of my guests for today's show. Uh, Fifi Manfred uh, of uh, Love and Insure FM is also here uh, with us, bringing us uh, the updates from the ground as it is uh, on this new development as we also continue to discuss uh, the subject of former players who become coaches and how much impact they're able to make uh, there, uh, you know, in the dugout and on the touchlines. Let me just pick uh, the, the thoughts, the quick thoughts of um, Coach Osman Seydou, who's uh, here with us in studio, uh, on this particular development in, in, in Kumasi. Coach, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I think that, you know, analysis on Coach Prosper Natel Gum uh, is, is, uh, is not new to you. I mean, I'm sure we've, we've had conversations here on this show and on this platform uh, about his exploits and, and what he's been able to do, especially when he uh, got the opportunity to, uh, you know, to take up the mantle at Kumasi Asante Kotoko. He's making a return and it's coming at a very challenging time. How does he uh, pull through? Thank you very much, um, Nathaniel. Thank you for having me on this important show. One of the best shows I have I always want to listen to on Saturdays and throughout the week. Nathaniel, um, historically, second coming has, always, has not been very good for most of the coaches that we know. So for me, this is a real challenge for Dr. Ogum. Now, I, as a coach, I have a lot of respect for him because he has a little bit um, added advantage that I always argue about. The fact that he's, he's a doctor indicates that really he, he has some advantage of implementing what he learned um, from school um, to the betterment of, 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 of his job. But the question I want to ask is um, the conditions that he left Kotoko, the based on the conditions that he left Kotoko, are the conditions still there or something have happened to those conditions? Now, my, my concern is that I have no doubt, absolutely no doubt, that he is going to deliver. But, you see, performance do not happen in a vacuum. You need certain policies, you need certain structure, you need certain dedication to be able to perform. Now, having said all this, I repeat again, Joy. what were the reasons now. why he left Kotoko? If those reasons he believe have changed, then hallelujah for him. I strongly believe that's the best place for him to be. However, if that have not changed, then he might be facing the same problems that he faced. And one thing about Kotoko and Accra to folk is the fact that you come the first one, you come the second one, you finish with them. So I strongly believe that he might have thought into it very well. He might have given conditions like the Galka Top 4, you just mentioned about and I'm, I'm very optimistic that he has done those analysis now the next question is are the purchasing players now 
if they are, is he influencing the, the quality that he's going to work with? For me, that's where really my concern would be as a coach. Now, you see, Nathaniel, if Kotoko, I think Kotoko must, this time around, is not a request, it's a must, if they really would like to survive. They would have to ensure that, excuse me to say, with all due respect, run Kotoko as an entity, as, as a different company. And at the end of the day, they should even have shareholders. If, if you like, Asante, the, 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 our, our most respected Riviera Asantini, should have the highest stakeholder um, stakes in it. But it should be run as like, like a company so that they would be accountable at the end of every quarter, every, every month, every year. And if the, it doesn't go well, then based on the modern business practice, because we we'll move away from, I mean, looking, f looking at football for passion to co understanding football as a business. Because if you look at it as passion, that's where you're going. But if you look at it as business, you'll be thinking about sustainability. So that's where you'll be concerned about what your recruitment should be so that you can benefit from what you're recruiting now in the next two, three years. So for me, I think if he's been able to answer those questions, he's good to go. I wish him all the best, but it's going to be tougher than what he did when he was there the other time. This time around, no excuse for him. He's, he has, he's familiar with the system. He knows what Kotoko is. It's just about delivering like he did previously. So I think I wish him all the best. However, he's going to, be, he's going to face a lot of challenges than he did the first one. Thoughts from uh, Coach Osman Seydou here on the Joy Sports Link on Joy 99.7 FM. Uh, also, John Paintel, Ghana legend John Paintel is there with my colleague uh, uh, Fifi Manfred as well. Now, um, you send in your messages. I know you've got massive thoughts to share with us on this particular subject. And the main subject we're discussing today, which has to do with, uh, you know, how well uh, the game goes when you have former players as coaches. Um, th what, what would be... What would be a success story or what would be failure? So, for instance, the man set a standard uh, winning the league, which is the ultimate. So, if he comes in and finishes the season in fifth place or even in fourth place, it would be a failure? Look, it, it, it could even be a failure if he wins the league. Because winning the league, Kotoko are not so enthused about winning the league. They've done it severally. They just would like to win again. So, they, their expectation would be more than winning just a league. Because... To whom much is given, much is expected. So if, for me, from where I sit and where, the way I would analyze it, it's not about winning the league for Kotoko. It's, it's no news if you win the league for Kotoko. But it becomes news when you win the league and go to Africa and perform. So it's not really about the local league for Akumasa Santi Kotoko. They've grown, by, they've grown past that one. They, how many leagues have they not taken in this, in this country? If you're able to win league for Kumasa Santi Kotoko, it's really, honestly, it's no news. It's because they've been up and down for some time now, just like Gadjola in, in, in Baya, Baya or, or maybe City. It's not really about the league, it's about the Champions League. So I strongly believe that oh, my professor or doctor should really be thinking about going beyond just the league. And that depends on his preparation because garbage in garbage out and performance does not happen in a vacuum it takes a lot of effort dedication structure policies to be able to have good performance and then after having the good performance you do what we call performance management because where performance is managed performance improves mm. well um there's a message from uh ani osabute let me read this one good afternoon uh, sad Kotoko and Hass are supposed to be the traditional teams shining the lights of our local football to the rest of the world. Kotoko used to go shoulder to shoulder with Al the Alis and the Zamaleks and the Aseks, etc. But they have been left behind in terms of money, proper structures and systems. It's sad. Meanwhile, uh, at the Methodist Park in Pram Pram, the Futsal League is ongoing and Don Ziggy will lock, lock horns with peace lovers. Okay, thank you very much. Anil Sabute, who is now a promoter of the futsal game um one of these days we're going to bring our cameras there to uh, capture you know so uh he, he talks about how uh you know the superpowers have left you know the current superpowers have left kotoko behind like many years uh, behind 
Yeah, absolutely not. I've done this analysis on a number of occasions in this very studio. And and you don't you don't really see much change, do you? It, it doesn't look like changing because they are not changing their approach. They are not changing their understanding of the modern football. So I am not expecting anything super from Asante Kotoko and Accra Hato folk even this season. So example, as we as I speak to you now, the other lesser teams, so called lesser teams, are have their players intact. They've started their preseason. We are now struggling with the coach at Kotoko. Accra Hato folk is is purchasing players without a concern. They don't even have a coach. So what are you saying? Are you saying that the coach should come and work with what you've purchased already if that's not what he likes? So clearly, we envisage a challenge even in the next season for them because their preparation hasn't been so excellent. Kotoko might be a bit better because they've gotten a coach and the coach has even given conditions. I want to prepare my team and I would need this time to prepare my team. And within this time, I'm sorry, I'm not going to partake into any competition. That's a bold decision, and it takes a very bold coach to be able to do this, which I respect him for that. But really, nothing is changing. Go to Accra Lions today. Go to, I mean, the lesser teams, go. Accra, um, um, Heart of Lions, even Heart of Lions, Randy, Randy's team. They, they, they are very prepared, and they've started the preseasons already. They have already have their players. So, really, as a coach, there is something called periodization in coaching. <coughs> Where periodization, is, in in simple words, it's like stages of the process that you'd go to to play your league or your preparation stages. So we have preseason, we have in season, we have off season, and all required certain number of weeks and certain number of dedication and structure. Now, if if you do, that's where you see teams. Um, they started playing very well in a league. One, two, three, four, five matches, they come they slump. Why do they do this? Because they spend a lot of time, a lot of time during preseason, and they've gotten to their peak. And every team that goes to gets sorry gets to its peak after some number of matches will drop. This is scientific. It's it's not artistic. So as a coach, if you do not really manage your periodization very well, what is going to happen is that it's not about the players, it's not about the resources, but it's about how you manage the team. Now, if you have a team too that is not prepared for a league, it happens to us in, in the in last season at Kowana so um, um second division. We started the league, we're not prepared. So by the time we get to the limelight, the league is almost over. But we were scoring everybody. So it really and 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 now the dicey aspect of all this is that in Ghana, unlike Europe, where you know that this is the preseason time, this is the in season and this is the off season. In Ghana it's not like that. Until recently, I I must acknowledge that there's been a lot of improvement with, with Kets when it comes to when we start the league. You can testify to that. In the last two in aligning with the international calendar. Uh, exactly. Yes. In the la last two three seasons, when we say we start on, on this date, we start on that date. So it's good for coaches. But however, the point I want to make is that Accra to folk and Kumasi Asante Kotoko are not doing anything different. So we do not expect to see any different results. All right. Now, um, John Pencil raised a very important point about uh, support, which I guess that you've also hinged on. Um, first of all, giving the coach the space to operate. And giving the coach the space to operate, obviously, uh, hovers around uh, making them have a hand in the decisions on as to who they are going to play with because they are going to work with the players directly. Um, John, can you tell us, based on all of this, if um, you feel or you disagree with this this assertion that probably we're going to have, uh, you know, a, a club outside of Sante Kotoko and Hearts of Oak win the league again in the coming season based on all of these factors that we're seeing because it just looks like the big clubs are, you know, having some challenges here and there and quietly the, the smaller clubs are, are just picking the lessons and organizing themselves. John, can you kindly unmute? All right, please go ahead. Please go ahead. We can hear. We, uh, I think I was sure to hear you now. Oh, 
Okay, can you can you unmute once again, please? Still here on Joy 99.7 FM as we discuss uh, major developments in our football. Uh, the latest coming in earlier, uh, a few hours earlier, uh, was that uh, Kumasi Asante Kotoko have settled on uh, Prosper Nate Ogum uh, to take over as head coach again. So uh, that has taken a better part of the day as we look at the effect that ex-player uh, coaches have on, on clubs and teams generally. Um, I was just asking John Paintsel about whether he sees a repeat of what we saw the last season in the local league where, um, you know, Mediama SC, who obviously is out of the traditional hearts and Kotoko, uh, won, won the league. Is Can we see a repeat, especially because uh, the big clubs are not exactly as organized as you expect them to be ahead of the start of the season? John, please go ahead. All right, we're, we're having a bit of a challenge with uh, your audio, John, so we're going to rectify that and, and, and get back uh, on that. Uh, but what, what does this also do? I mean, when, when you have um, the clubs who do not necessarily have the numbers, you know, uh, and you have these smaller clubs dominate, you have like a Midyama dominate. Uh, so a Midyama is coming to Accra to play Great Olympics. They are the champions. However, uh, you, you, you do not... Uh, get the fans in the stands because they don't have a big supporter base well let, let's get back to john looks like he's uh, been able to sort it out so john please go ahead yeah so i was saying kotoko and then half of folk are the giant in our premier league they come with weight especially when it comes to supporters going to the field and they have given so much joy to the country when it comes to football and now football is dynamic. Now football has changed. And I believe that um, they have learned from uh, what happened last season to both clubs. And as you see, they are top notch. We can win it. Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. We can hear you. And I, and I believe that every season they have, uh, they have uh, their coaches uh, writing their reports to them. And I think those clubs need to take very serious on the coaches' reports at the end of every season because that helps the team going forward and then see where they went wrong, where they can improve, and where they think they can adapt. Because coaches' report by the by the every end of the season is very, very important. Uh, team manager report, coaches, the head coach report, assistant coach report, uh, even physio, physio, and then the captain himself need to write a report if necessary. Because when you are building a team, a team like Kotoko and has, they need to have all these uh, structures in place. So reporting is very, very important in the club. And I believe that uh, every day we learn. Uh, Mediama started long way. Every season he kept pushing, pushing. And then this season, see where he finds himself. He won the league. And Moses Parker, I've known him. He's a very serious man, very professional. He knows what he's doing. So I think... Uh, Kotoban has has a lot a lot to do, uh, but making sure that the people that they are working with they need to hear and listen to them more because they are the people who can make the team uh, successful. And also, one advice I can give to both clubs is they need to come close to their supporters and let the supporters know what is happening around the club because they are there for the team. Without supporters, you can't do it. So I believe that Kotoko and Hearts can do better uh, going forward this season. Mm. Kotoko and Hearts can do better going forward this season only if uh, they do certain things. Um, you send a message. Remember, it's 055 55 uh, Let's get this conversation going, uh, especially with this major development on uh, Kumasi Asante Kotoko and uh, uh, the way the way the way forward. Um, what what would you like to see done in future, Coach? Um, you know, especially when it comes to the way these boards are appointed and switched over, appointed and switched over. Um, looks like the rate of you know the turnover rate is very high. Yeah, really. Um, I strongly believe that you. This is a very important topic that demands like a full show um, to really digest into it. But before I continue, let me say hi to my colleague. Uh, my, it's my senior, actually, um, John, for 
for mm-hmm. having to be on the same show show with him. Now, the major challenge is the fact that we are mixing family, friendship with business. Okay. Or familiarity with business. Now, in a typical business setting, there is something we call KPIs. Mm. Key performance indicators. There is something we also call IOP, mm. Individual Operational Plan. I mean, there are a number of them. And there is something we, we also call job description. Now, that I can tell you for a fact that most of these club, big clubs that we see do appointment without proper terms of reference, without proper individual operational plan, without review strategy, without monitoring and evaluation strategy. So because I'm a rich man, I'm given that CEO position. That's it. Nobody checks on me. Nobody tell me what I'm supposed to do. Um, what we really like is at the end of the year, we want to be champions of the league. That's it. Nothing else. So now the CEO then picks the job, and the job becomes his. He decides. The job is in his pocket. He decides when, what should happen. When in actual fact, if they are really using the structure, at the end of every quarter, every month, every half a year, every year, the CEO must have somebody he or she is reporting to. And then we should also measure the performance of the CEO. And where there is something called um, performance improvement plan, where the CEO is not performing, you put him on performance improvement plan. If he's not able to do it, you give him some months. You, de- you, kick, it, you kick his ass out. Because we're doing serious business. This is not friendship. It's not family. And it's, it's not familiarity. It's business. So until... We are able to do that. And I tell you that teams that have been successful, again, I repeat again, Accra Lions. Teams that have been successful in the past two, three seasons, and you can give an example of, of such team as a team, one of them is Accra Lions. And if you go to Accra Lions, they have structures. Your performance is being managed on daily basis, on weekly basis, on monthly basis. It's not, we are not, they are not only managing the performance of the players, but they are also managing the performance of their coaches. And you know, they have a culture. The coach must ensure that he fits into that culture. Or, I'm sorry, you go. So for me, really, before CEOs will be, or before management will be able to perform very well, we need to distinguish business from friendship, from familiarity, and from family. And until we're able to do that, I'm sorry, we are not going to get any headway. And we'll be talking about the same thing years over and over. Not in this same studio. I can confidently tell you that over five years ago, I said it in this same studio, that if Accra Hato folk do not change their ways, they are not going to do anything in the next five years. It has come to pass. And I'm saying it again. If they do not do they do not diagnose their, their business and do a proper situational analysis and come out with proper strategies. They're going to struggle again for the next three years. One, they won't take the leak. Two, they would always be talking about some other things that are, are not really important that will not really help um, the club. Same to Kumasa Santi Kotoko. And same to any club that is not using the scientific approach to management. We've moved from the artistic approach to, to management. Let's give the job to those who deserve it. Mm. Well, and, and, and talk about that. Um, you know, you've, you've hit a very important point as well. Uh, you know, this lack of results for the clubs that are supposed to be making impact. And I'll, I'll give this to Fifi Manfred. Fifi, um, what what do what do fans tell you? Uh, okay, so we'll, we'll get him back so that he tells us uh, what what the fans tell him. I mean, when you're having regular conversations, you know, after work about why they they would not want to go and and watch the games now, you know, which is a big subject we're discussing on on July thirty one at our, th- our thought leadership event. Yeah, but but really. <laughs> there's work to do in in both Accra Folk and Kumasa Santi Kotoko, including working on the fans. Mm. So it's a holistic 
diagnostic approach they need to have how how easy would it be um to convince the supporters who are always looking for are the three points and the results that you are at a certain stage of the club's development for instance uh heart of oak we see is focusing very heavily on infrastructure we see them um uh, seriously working on the uh the secretariat uh, here in asylum down the building is up uh, the concrete shell is done it's been roofed as well and you also see that Pobiman has been done so there is you know but but how do you come because the fans they they know goals and 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 ecstasy and and joy that's why they come to the stadium again nathaniel scientific approach there is something called sbcc social behavior communication change this is a pure scientific tool that must be used on the supporters of agarato folk and kumasa santikotoko there should be some generational transformational approach to ensure that they move the mindsets of their supporters from looking at football artistically to looking at football and what scientifically in terms of uh, business wise now till date still supporters go to the pitch because they support akarato folk they support kumasa and tikotoko and what is their support if you ask them if you do a detailed analysis so what do you mean by you're supporting asante kotoko what i mean is we should be winning matches and i should be happy to them that's their support so when we are not winning matches i don't care i won't go to the stadium i will, will not go to the stadium now if you have a supporter like this it means that that supporter is still having that old mind if the team is not winning matches you don't stop going to the stadium but as a stakeholder and as a as a key stakeholder you should know that if you do not go to the stadium it will affect the club and there is nothing positive that will change about their performance what you ought to do is to to come to a round table sit down with management and tell them that because you are key stakeholders and you contribute to the team you believe that the team is not doing well in this direction you think we should go this direction but still go to the stadium because if you do not go to the stadium how do you envisage how do you think the team should be managed zero so come and go back and come back nothing happens so that's why i'm saying that it needs a, a a holistic approach including changing the mindset of their supporters because they have huge supporters nobody can can deny that and if you have huge supporters and your supporters are not contributing clearly it indicates that there is a challenge so what's the challenge look at the challenge use modern scientific tools to 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 move their mindset from where they are so example where you sit and where i sit if i write the word six year i see six you see nine i cannot tell you your nine is wrong when i'm standing at where i'm standing i either have to pull you to my end or you pull me to your end then we start seeing the same figures and that's what we need to do with our supporters in terms of kumasi asante kotoko and akarato folk otherwise we we'll continue to experience because as a as a as a, as a as as a supporter i mean let's go to that more advanced world do you want to tell me that at anfield supporters do not have a stake they don't negotiate they don't contribute to what is happening in the team when there's a problem they don't stop going to the stadium they hardly would stop unless of course they've tried something and it didn't work and the next line of action will be so we boycott it and when we boycott you would have to come and look for us so i think supporters have power that they really do not know they've limited their power to standing in to to getting into the stands and be shouting hey hey arose arose ukuma pema apembeba they have power beyond that and i think this is the time they should use it actually 0551111997 0551111997 here on the joy sports link on joy 99.7 fm All right, so um, this is um, a message from Alex Walker. Alex Walker says, I just heard you talk about Pobiman and how it's been done. What has been done? The two hostels are rented apartments from private individuals. The white and yellow buildings are rented. Okay, Alex, uh, clarification there. I talked about the fact that it's being worked on and the fact that the, the team trains there. <laughs> yes, that's what I was talking about. And in terms of 
uh, the construction. I was also talking. I was also t talking in reference to the headquarters or the um, the head office building, which is in Asylum Down. I was there when uh, the old one, the old structure, was raised down, and I've seen the concrete structure up. So that's uh, that's for clarification purposes. In a bit, we'll be activating the phone line so that you can join us today. Um, the development in Kumasi has taken uh, the better part of the time, uh, but uh, we are just delving into that area of uh, having. Uh, you know, success on the pitch when you are uh, an ex-player and how much of it we've seen. Um, in our history, interestingly, at uh, the level of the Black Stars, for instance, we've we've seen uh, quite a good bit of it. I mean, you look at the legendary C.K. Jamfi and his exploits. Absolutely, um, Nathaniel. I, I, I listened to the, 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 the conversation on that, but for me, it comes in stages. What there is something called demonstration in coaching. You need to demonstrate to the player what the play, what you need the player to do. And then most of the time, this demonstration can be tactical or technical. So let's separate. Let's separate the two. When it comes to technical, then really, maybe a very good old player, not just an old player, because we have some good good big names in football that tec uh, te uh, te technically they are not good they cannot pass the ball well they cannot shoot the ball they cannot head the ball but i don't know how they manage to be superstars so where we, we consider a, a very old player to be technic te technically good like he can pass the ball he can cross the ball well he can head the ball he can so that would be a very big advantage to that old player because he knows how to do that. So when it comes to demonstration, he will be able to do it. Now, beyond this layer, Nat, the next level to think about is, did you know that we build techniques at a younger, younger age? So does that also tell you that those old players should be with the U10, U12, U13, U15 and building their techniques because they have good techniques themselves and when it comes to demonstration they can demonstrate well now when it comes to when it comes to real football it goes beyond techniques Jose Moreno would not come and coach a player how to kick a pass, ball or how to cross a ball then it becomes tactical then it becomes tactical now when it becomes tactical trust me it's not automatic that because you've been old player you would you would be good with tactics no it is not but it is somehow automatic that if you're an old player definitely you might have one or two techniques that you can work with so we need to separate these layers then if really we are saying that automatically a former player would be um, a good coach would he be a good technical coach or tactical coach obviously based on the analysis i've given then we should be having them building the techniques of our young players now beyond this coaching is an art it just like journalism it's not automatic that because your father is over to you you would also become over to you Jolati. it's not automatic <laughs> however if your father intentionally structure your life in such a way that because he is a journalist he wants you to become a journalist there is a possibility that you could become a journalist but a lot depends on who you as an individual the fact that your father is a chief imam does not make you a chief imam automatically now the point i want to build here is that in modern coaching it is more scientific than artistic now, wh what I mean by scientific is the fact that you need to have a lot of management background to be able to be a good, a good coach. You should, your communication should be excellent. You need to have listening skills. You need to, to, be, to, be, you, to, to be on top of conflict resolution. So really, it goes beyond just kicking and passing the ball when you want to become a good coach. And that's where I say it, and I would always say that, I'm not saying that if you are not educated, you cannot be a good coach. But if you're educated, you really have a better chance of becoming a good coach than than um, somebody who really has not, has don't have a very good 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 education. So the point I want to make here is that that it's it's not automatic. 
that because I'm a former player, I become a good coach. If you do not have the qualities of a good coach, you cannot become a good coach. But you can become a good a good passer of the ball. You can become a good header of the ball. Coaching goes beyond just techniques. It goes beyond just tactics. Scientific coaching is about management. It's about communication. It's about having listening skills. It's about having conflict resolution skills. It's about negotiating skills. And it goes beyond just the fact that I'm a former player. I didn't play football, so you might think that I'm being biased. But really, that's what it is now in modern soccer. That's what it is. And we've had coaches who are very good football players. I don't want to be local, but I can say Maradona because he's not here. Excellent player. Splendid. Fabulous. But he was not a good coach. Yeah, I was going to refer to that example from... Uh, the FIFA World Cup, and considering that the FIFA World Cup was the stage where he made his biggest achievement, I mean, he makes a return there with his national team, and uh, you know, it's yeah, you difficult. See, you see, the challenge is we have some in Ghana here. I'm not going to mention anybody. I name. think I know who you are talking <laughs> about. <laughs> uh, Fifi, um, can you can you tell us, uh, you know, about about you and 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 those. Uh, names that you feel have have impressed so far when it comes to this particular mm -hmm. endeavor um i always would want to proudly refer to cecil jones i took a few um obviously i was not anywhere around mother earth when he was playing actively back in the 60s but then um he was uh, an integral part of the black stars team was a nation's cup winner and 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 those who were were around during his era tell me about his technique and his uh you know his style of play, which earned him the accolade, sir, you know. And then he comes to coach and uh, he wins the ultimate and goes to CAF and receives the CAF Coach of the Year as well. Um, so thank you very much, Nat. I, 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 when it comes to coaching and then ex-players, so let me start from you, first of all. Um, if you look at coaches like um, Pep Guardiola, um, who wasn't, so one of the things I've actually realized is that most of the very good coaches who were ex-footballers were not the best players. Um, so Pep Guardiola, for one, wasn't the poster boy of his time. He was, um, at best, a more than average and above average player. And if you hear somebody like Mauricio Pochettino, he speaks to how he learned everything from Marcelo Bielsa. Um, yes, people like Johan Cruyff were good footballers and excellent coaches as well in their own right. Um, but as the game evolves, I think I agree with Coach when he says that, you know what, you need something much more than your experience as a footballer. The experience is very important, mind you. There is a reason why a Pep wants to have very good communication. He knows what to say to a player, especially a younger player, because he knew what he wanted to hear as a young player at the time. And that's all of these things culminate into the very good um, 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 um um, prospect he has, um, the very good successes he has as a coach. So it's important. On the Ghanaian terrain, um, I've watched a few coaches in recent times. So one of the coaches I've worked closely with is coach Amadou, um, Nuruddin Amadou. He was with Ken Faisal. He has just been appointed as Samatex coach. He played for Ken Faisal in Kotoko at some point in time. Excellent. And you know, there is something of what coach is saying that adds to it. Coach Nuruddin was one of the most educated people that I know whilst he played the game. So he has the scientific basics of the game and also has the, 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 the experience as a footballer. So I really do think that for current former ex-footballers, ex-footballers to succeed in coaching, they need to have the education. They need to get a scientific education because it is not enough to be an experienced footballer, you need to get a scientific education. The game is much more scientific. Even in the manner in which you trap a ball, in which angle. Yesterday, I saw Mauricio Pochettino um, in Chelsea's preseason games. He was teaching some of the young boys how to run from outside, inside, in receiving a ball and transiting from defense to attack. I think that if you are a footballer and you are a, we say a number six, you probably will not have this technique at your fingertips. 
So if you become a coach, it may be hard for you to even teach these players who play on the wings of these things. But if you take your scientific part of the game seriously and you get the education, then you have everything in there to teach your players and help them grow in, in that regard. I really do think that as a footballer, you need more. Not, but you see, one of the reasons why I think we haven't gotten that is that in elsewhere, they have infused football training as players with education. So before the average footballer abroad finishes their playing career, they have some level of education, some level of education that makes them appreciate certain things that if they transit from players to coaches, then they become proper coaches because they have had that level of education throughout their, their, their playing days as footballers and also throughout they are learning these as young players in the academy. So really, if we want to help the current football players now, I see we want to get foot coaches in the future who are who are who are ex footballers because we want the expertise. Then we need to find a way to intertwine education with our football. Then we are going to have players who would want to spend hours on end to reading about a game, reading about new science of the game, new technology of the game, new ways of playing the game then all of that was going to help into our game. So I really do think that it, it is all of both. You need the expertise, you need the experience. But the funny thing is that somebody who has had the, the, the scientific learning of the game is likely, in my opinion, to go further than an ex-player who hasn't had a scientific um, 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 studies of the game because, yes, you may not have the experience, but you have exactly the know-how to run a football club as a coach. All right, so uh, let's get back uh, to John Pato, who has a, a reaction to one of the thoughts made uh, earlier. John, let's hear you. There's a question I want to I want to all of us to understand here that uh, when when we are talking about coaches, there's no such uh, word in saying that. The coach is not good. There's no word like that. <laughs> every, every coach is good. And uh, if you don't, if you don't be successful in the club that you sign for, that doesn't make you a bad coach. You can be uh, a coach, Morino, but if you don't have uh, some materials in your team, you don't have some particular players in your team, you might fail. So for me, every coach that has his own certificate working is a proper coach. You see, uh, coaches have a lot of responsibility because when we say uh, coaching philosophy, a coach must have his own philosophy. And then the coach says, who are you? Okay, so you representing as a coach and what do you do as a coach? All these things will come to play. So you as, as an ex-footballer or a coach who has never played football before, I believe that, you know, football um, on the field, the, the the technical aspects and then the physiologic aspect is different but if you're able to combine it that is why um, he he mentioned that somebody Moreno was teaching the young boys and then because he have learned and all that and all that. and those who have also played from academy they know like like he did mention because the more you play the more you become experienced so when you attach the, the coaching skills and the coaching uh, education to it, then you are good to go. But I have a problem when we will sit here and mention that the coach is not good. That way the coach is not good is what I want us to take it out. Every coach is good, but when you, when you, when you fail, it doesn't make you a, a bad coach. Because a coach should be identified player through his body language. If now I'm coaching. If a player comes to training and look at him, I know the player is not ready. I know the player is ready. So you help the, co the player to, to build up himself. You call him. That is why you're a manager. Being a coach, you're a manager. You call him and you ask what is happening because I know you. Every coach must know his player. So somebody who has played to the highest level, he knows all this. But somebody who has never played, he has to start from the grassroots, from uh, the scratch, to learn going forward. So I like the fact that uh, he did mention that, yeah, uh, it's good to bring the ex-footballers in because they are playing all their time, they know the, all the bases and, and all. 
So I believe in practicals, not theory. Because as a coach, you don't need theory to, to perform on the field. Practicals, a coach should be able to identify and demonstrate what he wants the players to do. Example, you are going to play against Olympic. You have watched Olympics, you know their weak side, you know their strong side. Demonstrate on the field how you want them to position themselves, how you want them to build up. But if you can't do that as a coach on the field and you base on computer alone, that's where you fail. But that will not make you as a, a, a bad uh, coach. Mm. That's what I want to keep in there. Well, yeah. All right, uh, Osman, you, yeah. Thank you very much, um, my senior. Um, I think I, I, I respect your opinion with all you said, but I have a different one. Mm. All coaches cannot be good coaches. And this is a fact. We have bad coaches. I could be a bad coach. Anybody else could be a good coach. Anybody else could be a, a bad coach. We have bad coaches and we have good coaches. Um, I think the argument we are putting across is the fact that you could have a very a old player who becomes an excellent coach when he blends both, both artistic and scientific method of, of coaching. You could also have somebody who is not um who is who's not been an old player but a very fantastic coach. You could have somebody to who is old player, very bad coach. You have somebody who's not been old player, very bad coach. And that's a fact. This this is non negotiable. It's a fact. But like I said, I, I in my presentation I categorize what we need at what level in a player's journey in terms of from age and where they really need to develop their techniques but when it comes to the, the bigger boys really is not about techniques it really is about tactics really is about managing um, the personality crash managing conflict communicating well to them and listening skills and this has nothing absolutely nothing to do with you being old player or you're not the old player well, so uh, it, it then means that um, you go in there, you apply what you know scientifically, and if it works for you, it works for you? Absolutely. So for me, really, I, and I want to be plain on this, I'm not saying that old players are not good coaches. We have old players that are excellent coaches. You mentioned some of them, and we still would have. Even John himself is one of the examples we can have. But trust me, the trend at which we are going it requires just you it requires beyond you being old player that that's that's a, that's a scientific fact that nobody can toy with thank you all right um zero zero uh, five five one 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 nine nine seven zero five five one 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 nine nine seven let's let's get on the phone line now and get an update from the adakujachi uh training facility where uh asante kotoko uh, having a visit by the overlord of the Ashanti Kingdom, uh, Otunfo Osei Tutu. Now, our analyst, uh, Osei Ousu Bempa, is on the entourage, uh, the Ashanti Hines entourage, uh, who are inspecting the facility, and uh, he would just bring us up to speed on uh, the kinds of conversations that have been had there. We've actually also, uh, you know, uh, received some images of Coach Kwesiapia, uh, Coach Prosper Natelgum, and, if, and many others who are there on the grounds now. Uh, Mr. Seo Usubempa, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Seo Usubempa, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Very well, no. very well. Can you, can you uh, kindly paint a picture of what exactly is happening there now and what this visit by the Utum 4 is supposed to achieve on a day when uh, it's been confirmed that there's a new head coach? Um, good afternoon. I am following his meeting with the supporters, chiefs, and the co-players. Right, before, you, before you go on, we're getting a bit of wind in, your, in your, your audio, so can you position yourself well a little bit? Thank you. All right. So, um, he's trying to uh, reposition so himself. We arrived here probably about 30 minutes ago. Very well. Uh, a lot of people here, probably about can count more than 500 people here. People of the residents, residents of the area and life, Kotoko supporters. A few of them came in little buses and stuff and came here. 
currently he's been being conducted around the facility. He entered the what they call the container uh, area. He's been in and out, entered a few other structures, uncompleted ones, of course. And he's currently being toured around by, I can see, Kukunti, George Kennedy, uh, Christopher Damania, who is the chairman of the circles, uh, National Circus Council, and the great Accra chairman and the, the past chairman of Ashanti region, uh, Mr. Omen So there are a lot of people here, people who are in groups. Uh, of course, ideas and opinions are different as to what has, uh, they've seen here. So whether it was worth, basically the discussion has been around the container, whatever project that they did here. People are, some people have the opinion that it's just a simple waste of money because uh, bricks and mortar could have done a much better job, probably at a lesser cost. Others are of different opinions. So there's a couple of arguments and discussions. Not arguments, not as in critical sense, but at least people will be sending views, uh, discussing what they think the way forward is for critical issues. Um... With, with all of these and with the interactions that that you've you've uh, you've monitored so far, the kinds of personal conversations you've had so far, uh, what does it look like in terms of the energy Asante Kotoko is bringing into the, the season? Uh, can you please repeat the last part? It's I was just windy. asking about what kind of energy you feel Asante Kotoko is going to bring into the new season, uh, considering everything that's happened, you know, in the last twenty four hours, the conversations you have had as well. Yeah. Well, let me also say, just for the purpose of the introduction, that Coach Ogun is also part of the entourage. So the rumors going around that he's going to be appointed a new coach uh, of Kotoko, Fabio has been given impetus by the fact that he's working on the right-hand side of the chief. He was in the inner entourage of the chief as they are being conducted around the facility. But I think, talking about the energy, this is not the first time we've seen the chief come here. I think after when Dr. K.K. Sapon was in office, he was here a couple of times. After uh, K.K. Sapon left and the Kukuti came, we saw him, and then even the past uh, administration that just uh, this, got dismantled, so he was here. Uh, probably it seems uh, that uh, maybe for the third time or fourth time, probably you will see that things probably are not going well. And it's indeed, things are not going well. But as I speak to you, I'm standing just close to one of the training pitches. You know, there are two training pitches. I wouldn't call them standard training pitches. They are basically like two pitches. But even the first one, which is where I understand they've been playing and training regularly, it's more currently of a forest than anything else. It seems to me that the last, since the last time they trained here, nobody has been here to even clean the place. It's very windy. You see unwanted weeds. I'm talking of unwanted weeds because for a football field, you expect to see grass, some form of grass. And what I'm seeing right now, elephants, what in the grade they call Antana, Camara, and all those things are here. And it's, the second pitch, after the second pitch, it's probably loose as if. Uh, he's been probably going to be prepared the next couple of weeks or so to plant some plantain or something. Because virtually, that pitch, I don't think it will even be ready the next three, four months if they even embark on serious resurfacing. The facility is in terrible shape. I'll be honest with you. The facility is in terrible shape. Take it upon left at the time that he has started, started some brick and mortar projects. If he didn't do that, that. That thing was not continued by the this administration, nor by any of the subsequent administration. If you remember, a couple of years ago, there were reports that some people came here to steal iron rods for the project, and they were missing. Currently, these iron rods are so exposed. Left, it reminds me of this uh, so-called affordable housing project that was embarked upon by President Kofor, which has been left to rot. It's exactly what I'm seeing here. And it's sad that a month money has gone into a project like this. I just can't believe it. And it's the reason why I kept saying and saying that protocols problems are nothing but leadership. Nothing more than leadership. Absolutely, there's no way any private businessman will make this form of level of investment and allow it to go the way it has generated into. It's just terrible and I saw. Wow. Wow. Um, so clearly, um, there is a lot of work to do in terms of uh, you know, putting an investment into the training facility itself. Absolutely. There's a lot of work. I would probably, I mean, if you are going to do anything at this training facility, then you are looking at starting from ground zero. Because I'm sure you even spend a lot more money correcting some of the wrongs before beginning to embark on anything. Again, even the last time, the first time I came to this place was around June, 20, June July 20. 20, 2010, when I first visited this site. 
looking at what I've seen right now, the land that pointed out to me as the area that, has been allocated, that was allocated initially for the project, almost half, if not more, have been enclosed by private development. Now wow. there are buildings all over. So the amount of space left, even for Kotoko's future project, probably less than 50% of the land that was originally allocated. As I said, even on the second pitch, if a player kicks a ball, he can enter somebody's premises. I'm not exaggerating. Wow. It's a uh, uh, for you to see how close development has been. It's just like, I mean, if you go to, for example, my alma mater, University of Ghana, where the Okomulo Sabah pitch, pitch is. I mean, if you are playing, you can even kick it into any of the uh, rooms somewhere. That's how close people have developed to the site that was originally located for this project. Now you can hear the siren, uh, the entourage is departing, the entourage is leaving. He's been here for probably less than 45 minutes. I'm sure. I don't think he addressed the press because I was just kidding. He didn't address anybody. I'm sure he will make his pronouncement, if any, later. But I would doubt very much. If based on what he's seen, he can call, he can say that he's very happy about what he has seen. This is something that uh, Kotoko should not be identified with. Absolutely not. Completely not. Mm. It's just a shame. Completely. Wow. Wow. And obviously, not. I'm not saying this to I'm not blaming any management member or board member. I've said time and time again that the biggest investment and the key investment must come from the owner. I've never shied away from this. The owner must provide the investment. Look for people who can um, spend and spend the money, quote unquote, wisely, and expect them to account for their stewardship. But if anything short of that, I doubt we can see anything more than what we see. Board members were appointed. Uh, basically, I don't expect that he was expecting, I don't think that he was expecting the board member to spend personal resources and personal work in developing an infrastructure for Kotoko. This is a multi million dollar infrastructure. And I don't think any individual on their own volition as a form of um, donation or whatever will do this for Kotoko. I'm sure if, uh, the owner begins to sink in some money. People will be encouraged to also make some personal group or institutional donations. But I doubt if the seed money must actually come from anybody apart from the owner. By whatever means, that money will come from. Whether he will be able to get some partners, uh, organization to partner with him to get this much-needed investment for the plan. Well, uh, very disappointing indeed. But uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mr. Seo Usubempa. We're grateful to you for the updates that you brought us. Um, our, our senior analyst, uh, Ose, Mr. Osei Usubempa, uh, he was with the Utum Four in, you know, in uh, a visit, a surprise visit to the, uh, you know, training facility area, and apparently, it's in a, a big state of disrepair. Um, surprised? Not surprised? Not surprised. Mm. Yeah. B b before we go on, let's just quickly take uh, final thoughts from uh, John Paintel, who. Uh, would have to jump on a flight very shortly. Uh, John, uh, we're, we're grateful for your, for your time. Uh, very interesting developments on the show today. Uh, but okay, so uh, we, we lost him there. So thank you. So we'd like to say a very big thank you to John Paintsell for uh, making the time. But you were making a point about uh, this development. Not, not, not a very interesting. I'm, 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 I mean, it's, it's not something that surprised me at all like I said, because of the way things have been managed. And it, it goes beyond just looking at it as infrastructure. It's going to have a psychological impact on their preparation towards the league. And that's where some of the problems might start. Because if, you are, if, you, if you're walking into a league with the fact that we, didn't have, we don't have good um, training equipment, we don't have good training facilities, the old management did not do well, they would also come out and try to defend themselves through their contacts who are in the media or what have you. So you don't have a peaceful house to even enter into the league with. And it will have a psychological effect on the players, on the technical team, on the on the on even the, the new management board that, that would come. And that has always been the challenge. So for me, this is not a very good development. And maybe the timing too is not very good. This could have done. Could be. We, we could have done this immediately after the leak. We we solve whatever problem it is. We talk about it on the airwaves. One two weeks is over. Then we we move straight into solving the issues. But having a new coach and starting this with the new coach is not very healthy. Mm. 
well um let, let's take uh, final thoughts from uh, okay fifi manfred also uh you know just, just had to uh, go and take care of other assignments but uh let's see if we can squeeze in a few phone calls uh zero zero three zero two two one six five four one zero three zero two two one six five four one and zero five five one 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 nine nine seven zero uh three zero two two one six five four one and also zero five five one 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 nine nine seven it's just sad that in the year 2023 um i've done um uh, just around two decades in this journalism uh, profession and um not only in in our sport but in other aspects of our of our development there's always this talk about lack of maintenance and you know facilities are built projects are uh you know commissioned and the first fear that we always harbor is that they will not be maintained properly and this development just goes to tell us that we still have that sickness as a people yes it's a culture it's orientation we always tell ourselves that we don't have good ma maintenance culture and we are happy about it we're happy talking about it as for ghana we don't have good management who is a Ghanaian, and who should have um good man and culture and uh, maintenance culture we are the people who are supposed to do that. So you keep saying we don't have, we don't have. Let's move from talking about the fact that we don't have to start talking about we are working on having that good maintenance culture. Let's start right from the homes at the schools, everywhere. Let's have this transformational change with, with our next generation. There is nothing like we don't. Who doesn't have? We are the Ghanaians and we are saying we don't have. So who should have good management uh, maintenance culture? Is, is that bad? Is that bad? But we need to do something about it. Everybody who has a responsibility of leading in any way, who has a responsibility of managing any edifice, wherever you are, I have one. I, I am supporting the National MOX edifice, for instance, and I'm going to ensure that good maintenance culture is, we instill good management culture there. Wherever you are, start doing something. Let the teachers start teaching the kids on good management culture. Let's have some transformational change er everywhere we are. But it's not enough mm. to just sit on radio and say we don't have good maintenance culture. No, that's not enough. I'm sorry. Well, let's uh, take this phone call. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Nat. Thank you for joining us. Afternoon. Thank you. Bob's from Olympic. Please go ahead. Yeah, not I think um, club cannot do without supporters. And if club is not doing well, how can a supporter pay a gate fee and go and watch? So club is all about supporters. That's where they get their money. Imagine 2000 Champions League final. That's when Accra has a folk found out that they have maximum supporters. Not with Asante Kotoko, I think they have a sole owner, which is Otunfo. With my suggestion, this is what I think Otunfo can have an entrepreneur, a businessman, who would take on the club for like 10 years give him what they need for the club this is our target this is our target but it has to come with measures maybe like five years if you don't achieve this target then we renew your contract i think that will work for us Kotoko because they have the sole owner but with regards to folk it's like a limited liability, liability company but for Santi Kotoko, they have a sole owner of the club, which is a two four. So I think if they have maybe a plan for 10 years, businessman, take over the club. This is our target. Five years, if you are not able to do it, we renew your contract. We take you off. We bring another person. That will work. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, we're not able to squeeze in any more phone calls. Uh, just get into towards uh, the top of the hour where we'll bring you the Joy Headline News at 2. Uh, Coach, thank you so, so much. Uh, it's been wonderful having you here on the show. Yeah, would would also like to say a very big thank you to um, uh, John Paintel and also Fifi Manfred for joining us. Remember, uh, the major thought leadership event is coming up on the 31st of July at the Labadi Beach Hotel. More details to come and more angles. 
and confirmation of participation of major groups within the football ecosystem uh, during the week. But thank you all so much uh, for uh, listening to the show. Uh, grateful to the whole production team and the Joy Sports team as well. And uh, during the week, the administrative manager of the Ghana League Clubs Association, uh, Mr. Odrunyaku, turned uh, uh, 60, 64, 67, or 74, one of them. <laughs> yeah, a strong man, still going very, very strong. And uh, would like to say a happy birthday to him, uh, still going very, very strong. And also to our very good friend, my sister, uh, Wilma. Wilma Bruce turning 50 during the week as well. Wilma Bruce. Happy 50th birthday to you. So thank you for listening. I'll be back next week, God willing, um, with another show. Be well and keep it here on our networks. My name is Nathaniel Atto, and I have love for sport. Joy 99.7.